Hi, welcome to Ergo Everything, where we discuss RSI solutions for computer users. Today, we're covering a success story. It's not my success story. It is the success story of a man named James, who's an IT worker in the UK, um, which did cause some confusion because some of their medical professionals are called different things. Um, but I have his story printed out here. It's um, incredibly long. I had to, I couldn't staple all of it together, so I had to staple it in two separate parts. Um, and this is no longer on the internet, um, but can be found via the Wayback Machine. So um, I thought I would, one, make this into a video format um, so it's a lot easier for people to partake of this really amazing story. Um, what I really love about it is that it's broken down um, into a timeline. So it almost gives updates month by month, and which is probably why it's so long. And then this person went from not being able to work at all um, to being able to heal themselves and get back to work uh, full time with no problems whatsoever, which is always a success story everyone wants to hear. Um, so... <laughs> Due to um, a desire for no video editing, I have a uh, timeline here. Let's get that on the screen. Um, so we're going to go through an overview of the timeline first. If I can... Okay, cool. So um, his story starts in mid-2007. That's when he has, an, has his symptoms start. Um, but then it quickly devolves... And um, within a year, he has to quit his job, and we'll talk about we'll talk about this all in detail. Um, then, for about a year, he has some mild progress um, with a physical therapist that wasn't that great, and swimming, uh, which he really thought was going to cure him. Um, but uh, things got bad again. He had to start going to work part time, and um, anyways, things just started going bad. So I call this the. Uh, <laughs> second downhill spiral and um, it's even worse than the first downhill spiral um, he hits rock bottom um, we will discuss that and then he decides that he's going to try absolutely everything to heal himself he calls it everything but the kitchen sink i've actually never heard of that phrase before but it's cute he uses it a lot um, so he has like his first healing stage where he does like um, physical therapy and Pilates and is able to get a lot better. He's able to go back to work full time um, with a lot of pain and a lot of assistive technology. Um, but then he discovers trigger points, which leads him into his second stage of healing where he really truly gets better. Um, a lot of it is he's doing really great. He just is, has to like tweak little things that come up here and there. And then in 2012, um, he is doing great. And his last update is in 2013, where he says, I'm still doing really great, um, not having any problems. And I've heard a lot of success stories of people who have emailed me and said they had the same success. So this is the story we're going to discuss today. And there's a lot to it. So I have kind of oversimplified the story a little bit. There will, of course, be a link below to uh, read the whole thing if you'd like. So, um, he does mention that in 2006 he starts to get a stiff neck in the morning, but as he goes through his day, his neck loosens up and it's fine. Um, I didn't feel like that was really a big part of the story, so we're going to start in uh, 2007. And um, in 2007, I'm going to be looking at my notes a lot, um, he starts getting some occasional wrist pain in bed. He does mention that he's gotten a little bit of wrist pain uh, throughout his whole career, but it always goes away with just a little bit of rest, so it's never been a concern. Um, in mid-2007, and seven, not 17, <laughs> in 2007, he, his pain start, starts staying. It's not leaving. It's not going away. Um, however, He's also working as a database engineer. It's a job that's kind of going away with modern technology. I think that's what he said. Um, and But he actually says that he's working from home and he's working in bed with his laptop and he's all crunched up. And so when he starts feeling this pain, he assumes that it's because he's been in bed using poor ergonomic posture. 
And so um, he decides that, um, so in response to his pain at that time, he decides he's going to set up an ergonomic workstation. And um, he basically says that he knows exactly how to do that. He's been taught how to do that before. Um, here we go. I knew from previous training from my company's occupational health department on how to arrange proper keyboard, mouse, wrist rest, chair, monitor setups, and followed everything exactly to plan. Unfortunately, the pain didn't go away, although I would be okay within a, uh, I thought I would be okay within a short two-week holiday. So yeah, he sets up the ergonomic desk, starts working there. It's not getting better. So he thinks that because he was working with this poor ergonomic setup that his body just needs a little bit of time to heal from that so he goes on this two-week holiday i genuinely thought that with a bit of rest and proper ergonomics the rsa rsi would just go away um so that's where he starts um and then he gets back from holiday and things um don't get better and in fact they get much much worse his uh illness progresses very quickly within a year so um, by August, which is a few months later, he is not able to pronate his wrists anymore. Um, I will show you a video of that. So he can't pronate his wrists anymore, um, but he can hold a mouse okay. So he starts using a pen mouse like uh, this one, and he has to use pencils in each hand because he can't pronate and has to peck all the keys, which is a pretty desperate place to be. Um, his work, you know, sees what's happening, and they spend a bunch of money on him, get him an ergonomic chair, keyboard, mouse, everything. Um, he does go to his general care practitioner and is diagnosed with RSI, and the doctor says he might have thoracic, thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, but the doctor's tells him, hey, this isn't a big deal. You go to a physical therapist and you will get better. So he's not too worried. He's just waiting to get in to that physical therapist appointment. Now, while he's waiting for that first physical therapy appointment, um, he does do some interesting things to try to cope with his pain. Um, so one, he says, I experimented with different types of trackball, roller mouse, pen mouse, handheld mouse, trackpad, but none were particularly useful. I found that if I rotate using a different device each time, I could keep the pain at bay. I also started to use Dragon Naturally Speaking, which was extremely helpful. So I find it interesting how similar his story is to mine because I also did that and I would also rotate throughout all the different devices. Um, hopefully I can pop up a picture of all those devices that I own. And um, I also have Dragon Naturally Speaking. This is a microphone that I uh, use for it. And um, I just found that really interesting. Um, at this time, he also goes to uh, six osteopath uh, appointments. And this was kind of confusing to me. Um, osteopaths technically exist in the U.S., but they're not very common. And apparently chiropractic work is not very common in the UK. So an osteopath, from what I can tell, they are kind of similar to a chiropractor, um, but they focus a little bit more on like stretching and massage and other techniques to relax the muscles around the bones, um, but they do seem to basically be a chiropractor. Um, but he found that the osteopath treatment wasn't really helpful at all. Um, so, in, 2000, in January 2008, he is able to go to his first physio appointment. Uh, this is another difference I noticed. It's called physical therapy in America, and it's called uh, physiotherapy in other countries. I thought that was interesting. Um, so, he goes to his first physiotherapy appointment, and he describes his pain um, as sharp pains in the wrist, uh, generalized and along most of my forearm. Uh, so we got pain here, here, sharp pain in the front and outside edge of my shoulder. Um, and then the physical therapist notices that um, he has posture issues and his upper trapezius is really overworked. And so she gives him an exercise to um, 
strengthen his lower trapezius. Um, he later on, much later, finds out he was doing this exercise incorrectly. Um, but this is an example of the exercise he was given. Um, so needless to say, this is not really helping him. A couple months later, he gives an update um, about a new pain other than what I just described. Um, so this one he describes as, This was more painful than any of the other aches and pains I had. It was as if I had a sharp pin buried deep inside my shoulder joint. Um, so he does find a solution for this later, but he has to live with it for quite a long time. Um, and from my understanding, it seems like this deep pain that feels like it was deep, deep within this joint of the shoulder, that seems to be the thing that caused him to quit um, shortly thereafter. So um, in June, so I would guess four to six months later, um, he has to quit his job. And he describes his symptoms... He says, uh, my RSI symptoms were debilitating. I had a maximum capacity of just a few minutes work before I was in excruciating pain. My forearms were really a problem in other areas too. So he means other areas of his life. If someone telephoned me, I had to lie down so that I could hold my mobile without having to raise my forearm because they were too weak. Alternatively, I would put my mobile on a shelf at head height and talk into it without having to hold it. When people phoned me on my landline, I would put the telephone onto loudspeaker so that I didn't have to hold the phone to my ear. Such was the weakness of my forearms. So this really is a comfort to me because I quit my job <laughs> before I got to quite this bad. Uh, I was in a place where it was really bad, but... If he can heal, hopefully I can heal too. Now, after he quit his job, he saw a couple more physical therapists, and he started swimming. Um, technically, he actually started swimming before he quit his job, but to simplify, you know, this is the time he was swimming. And um, if we refer back to our timeline, which I can never seem to get positioned here, Um, so we've, we've gone through that first uh, downhill spiral. He just quit his job. We're now into the mild progress zone. Um, so he quit his job. He sees nothing really interesting happens during this time. He does swim to try to heal, and he does feel like that's helping. Um, and he theorizes later why he thinks that helped. Um, so he swims. He saw a couple more physical therapists. And um, he gets good enough uh, that he can go to, to part-time work. And it sounded like he only worked part-time for like a month or two. Um, his friend gave him part-time work so that he could work in little stints. So he was able to sw swim. And when he swam, when he swam, um, he got to the point where he was able to work. So he couldn't work even a second on the computer without pain, he gets to a point where he can work for like up to 40 minutes without pain. However, that's also using Dragon Naturally Speaking. So, um, you know, but for him, that's a big deal. So he's really on to this swimming thing. Um, and so he goes back to work part-time. He works in just little stints is what he describes. And he has to use, he has to do it, break it up in little parts. He has to use the voice recognition software. And then, so this is his um, setup. He's, so he has a Contour roller mouse in the usual position, which means the front of the keyboard. And he only uses it with his left hand. And then he has a standard mouse in kind of the standard position. And then he has a trackball next to the standard mouse. And then he has a WoW pen mouse. Uh, this isn't a WoW pen mouse, um, I don't think, but same idea. Has that in front um, of himself. And that's the setup. Oh, plus his microphone for Dragon voice recognition. Um, so that's the work 
<laughs> that's the setup he needs in order to work part-time. And he has to work part-time because he really needs some money. Um, and so he does okay for about six months um, after that. But then in August, things start to get bad again. So um, we get to the middle... When we get to the middle of 2009, um, then he starts to get bad again, and he has this little downhill spiral that happens very quickly. So we're going to read about that. It says, Things were now getting very serious. My RSI was as painful as ever, meaning that I could spend no more than a minute at the computer before the pain would kick in. Happily, I was at least able to do some things on the computer because I was now getting quite competent with Dragon Naturally Speaking. Nevertheless, my knee pain problem meant that I couldn't swim, and my neck soreness seemed uh, to be worse than ever. So basically, the reason he starts going down this uh, downhill spiral, the second one, is because he is not able to swim anymore, which was helping him get better very slowly, and uh, he does make more rapid progress later. Um, he says, in fact, my... and this is really sad. In fact, my neck was so bad that I found if I held my neck still still while watching tv it would be very painful i was depressed and in despair at this point i couldn't walk because my knee was in pain i couldn't sit still because my neck was in pain my back was still occasionally sore and i could do nothing at the computer because of rsi um then the next month uh is where he hits his own personal rock bottom i mean i think the last month november sounded like rock bottom, but December was the worst. Um, he says, I couldn't write with a pen. And for a long time, that was like his, his thing he could do. He used the pens to type with. Um, but at this point, I couldn't write with a pen. My lower back was often in pain. I couldn't walk very far because my knee was in pain. Moreover, I was now having problems. Um, my sh uh, He has a typo. Moreover, I was having, I was now having problems with my shoulder blade blades winging um here's a picture of that it's basically if you have enough muscle weakness your body can't hold your scapulas in place um he says the winging which means that whenever i was lying flat on my back as in bed i could feel the bottom part of my shoulder blade scapula pushing into the mattress and it was very uncomfortable I could only sleep on my side. I was at my lowest ebb. In late December, I decided that a new approach was necessary. So in January, the next month, um, this is what he says. I was now at my wit's end. Things were looking really bleak, so I decided to throw money at the problem. I took the last 3,000 euros out of my savings account and decided I would allocate it all to private treatment. Um, honestly, I wish we had any sort of socialized healthcare here. Um, I, cause when you're sick, you can't work and then you lose your insurance. I don't know. Uh, sorry. I've just, that's something I've, a conclusion I've come to with my own injury. Um, I decided to book appointments throughout the Birmingham slash Coventry area for multiple private physiotherapists, two Pilates trainers, Pilates trainers, one Alexander Technique teacher, and an osteopath. So he calls this approach everything but the kitchen sink. At this point, he's just very desperate, and he needs something to work. Um, so he then goes over the list of things he tried that did not work for him. So he tried um, the Alexander Technique. So I forgot to mention what the Alexander Technique is. I haven't done it myself, but I've looked into it, and basically... Um, you go and work with a teacher who's certified to do this, and they try to teach you how to move your body in a different way, um, in a way that doesn't, like, stress your muscles so much. Um, so some people say it really helps. It is very expensive, though, because you're expected to go see a teacher. You can't really learn it on your own. Have to go see this teacher that costs like 60 to 120 dollars not covered by insurance um and you have to see them like every single week um uh, in the beginning they even recommend going multiple times a week um and 
it, so it's very expensive. A lot of people don't try it for that reason. Um, the first person he went to, he said, was like really useless. So he immediately went and got a different teacher. And that teacher was just up front with him and told him that the Alexander technique was not appropriate for where he was at. Um, and then uh, he says... The problem with Alexander Technique is that it's good for most people who just need to maintain good posture or need some correction of mild postural problems, but a RSI needs something much stronger, more targeted. So the Alexander Technique did not work for him. Um, he'd already seen the osteopath before, but he decided to go to another one, um, and this osteopath said that she didn't think that the osteopath was going to help him and not to bother, so he stopped going. Um, then he went to see a lot of physiotherapists or physical therapists. Um, he, in total, throughout the course of his whole journey, he saw 16, and only two of them were helpful to him, so um, most of them did not help. However, he did see some physical therapists that helped, and those ones both had a background in Pilates and had a background in uh, trigger points. And basically, he um, his story is that the trigger points and the exercises that were, you know, either from Pilates or from, from the physical therapist are what healed him. He says, in short, what these physiotherapists slash Pilates trainers did was give me exercises to strengthen my lower trapezius serratus anterior, and take the load off of my overworked upper trapezius. One of the best exercises was called Pilates Arrow. Um, here's an example of that. On the side, and we'll stretch out a little bit further. Rotate, take a deep breath in, exhale and rotate further, and then come back to the middle. Same on the other side. Rotate as far as you can first, take a deep breath in, then exhale and rotate further to get more of a stretch and then back to the middle. So that's our bow and arrow stretch really. So he started going to the same physiotherapist regularly um, and he also joined a health club and was going every day for an hour of um, different exercises and once a week he had one-on-one -on -one Pilates sessions with um, these two different teachers who uh, both really helped him. And basically, um, everyone that helped both the, the physiotherapist and the Pilates instructors, they all knew a little bit about trigger points and kind of pushed him in that direction. Um, so the physiotherapist um, give him some other exercises that he really likes. Um, he mentions uh, this diamond press, which is a traditional Pilates exercise. Um, here's an example. The shoulder blades are sliding south, okay? And then think of the elbows going out east and west. So you're almost spreading the body in several different directions. Now in, um, April, uh, sorry, in March, he starts working again for four hours a day. Um, so that's more than he's been able to do before. Um, but he didn't really want to work. He, he just kind of needed to. Um, and he says, work was proving to be reasonably, reasonably acceptable. I was still changing my input device quite a lot, using a kneeling chair for better ergonomics and making good use of voice recognition software. I was working for about four hours a day, which, although painful, was necessary in order to pay the bills. Um, so he is working. And then... Um, he has kind of a breakthrough. So obviously he did get better. The fact that he was even able to work four hours a day was a big improvement just through those exercises. But then he has his next breakthrough, which is where he discovers trigger points. So in June of that year, he was visiting one of his Pilates instructors that he had one-on-one -on -one sessions with. And he was talking about the pain that he had in the front of his shoulder. Um, the pain slash fatigue. And um, she was really thinking that it had to be a trigger point in his, oh, I'm trying to remember what it is, infraspinatus, yes, which is the muscle, um, it's on your scapula and then it comes 
uh, through your armpit and connects to the front of this bone, the humerus. And um, here's, they had a really hard time finding it, and he didn't really believe in trigger points at this point. Um, but then he says, to my surprise, I found the trigger point uh, very quickly. It was exquisitely painful, but most importantly, exactly reproduced the feelings of pain slash fatigue in the front of my right shoulder. This was an extremely important breakthrough. So he didn't really believe that um, the pain he was feeling here could be caused by the back of his shoulder. Um, but basically what he's describing is he pushed on it and then it made this part hurt. And so in his head, he was able to see that they were connected. Um, and that was a big step for him. Um, then he says, I only saw Sarah and Angela. So that's his physiotherapist and his uh, Pilates instructor once uh, each week. And although the trigger point was efficiently dealt with at each session, so both of them were trying to do trigger points, I was still in pain the rest of the week. In late June, I purchased a copy of the trigger point therapy workbook and discovered that the trigger points really need daily treatment. Um, so I actually, interestingly enough, I bought this book and it arrived in the mail like two days before I found this story. Um, here's the book. And this seems to be the biggest part of his healing. The exercises from his physical therapist slash Pilates instructors were also very, very important. Um, but this is really what, uh, he got better really fast with this. So in June, he discovered the trigger points. In July, he went back to full-time work. Now he was still in pain, but he felt like it was really possible for him to go back to work. Um, and so basically, I'll just summarize this part, but he had, um, you know, the pain in his like uh, shoulder and his neck and back and stuff. And those were starting to get better. And then while he was working full time, he realized that he needed to apply the same principles of exercise um, to rebuild the strength in the muscles and trigger points to his forearms so that he could get better in that area as well. So um, he does that for basically a month. He does the massage for his uh, forearms. And then in October, he kind of preemptively uh, or prematurely declares himself healed. Um, he goes out for curry near his house as a celebration um, because he's able to work at the computer for over an hour without any pain. Um, so, you know, a little, a little too soon to be calling yourself healed. He said, uh, for the next few months, I still regularly needed to massage uh, my forearms to eliminate pain because uh, pain caused by trigger points that threatened to return. But since October 2010, I can pretty much work at the computer for as long as I like, usually about eight hours a day. All right, let's see where we are on that timeline. Um, so basically, he just keeps doing the trigger point stuff, um, doing his exercises. And things continue to get better. Um, so in at the beginning of 2011, he says, I was essentially free of pain and working full time. But occasionally at the end of the day, I could feel the various aches and pains and fatigue beginning to reappear. So this is a lot of progress. He's basically able to work full time. And at the end of the day, he feels a little bit yucky. But um, when he wakes up in the morning, he feels good again. And that is something he hadn't experienced for a couple years. Then uh, the next update we'll look at is, so what is this? January, February, March. So um, the next month he says, I must admit there are still occasions when I feel very slight degrees of pain in the same locations as before, but I have always found that treating the trigger points underlying the pain immediately resolves the issue. I am now full-time back at work in an IT job once again. So I think the job he had before um, was just a, like, I don't know, some other kind of job. But uh, at this point, just like a couple months later into the trigger point uh, therapy, he's able to go back to the same type of computer work. 
And then, um, honestly, it's really boring for a while because he basically just keeps saying, yeah, everything's going good. Uh, I did have this one thing that came up and I had to troubleshoot it with um, either exercise or trigger points or both. Um, and he just keeps doing that for a while. <laughs> and um, by 2012, he's done, um, he's done troubleshooting issues. He's fine. So I guess we'll try to look at this again. So um, once he discovers trigger points, he then is able to work full time during the second healing phase. And he just keeps, you know, troubleshooting little issues that come up with his trigger points and his exercises from um, his Pilates trainers and his, his physiotherapist. And um, he keeps getting better and better and not having any issues at all. By 2012, he's absolutely fine. He doesn't have any issues that he reports he has to troubleshoot. Um, and the last update he gives is in April of 2013, so mid-2013. And he says, um, he added this to the website after the article had been up for lots of years. So he says, everything is still fine. I still get plenty of emails with a good number reporting similar great results like mine with trigger point therapy. Some haven't found success, which may indicate other root problems. However, do persevere with trigger point therapy and Pilates. Uh, one person was initially skeptical, but after months of perseverance, finally got a breakthrough. Those trigger points can be sneakily hard to locate. Um, so I feel like some of the takeaways here are that what healed him uh, was probably a little bit of rest from the computer because he did stop working. Um, the biggest thing seems to have been that trigger point therapy workbook. Um, and basically, as soon as he discovered trigger points, he was actually able to go back to work full time in his field, um, which is really impressive. Um, and then the other thing that helped was physical therapy exercises slash Pilates exercises. Basically, he had to retrain his body and get his muscles that, uh, especially the lower trapezius, um, to be balanced so that he wouldn't be straining and causing pain on other muscles. Um, he did have to go see a lot, of, a lot of physical therapists to find any that could really be of use. So that is something I hear on the forums, <laughs> RSI forums as well, is that uh, a lot of times um, you have to go to a lot of different physical therapists to find a good one that can help with this type of issue. Um, I am really, I feel really good reading this personally because I feel like I'm on the right track. And I also feel like we have a really similar story. I started out by just buying a whole bunch of different mice and keyboards and, and trying whatever I could and using the voice recognition software, then being forced to quit my job, then um, getting into physical therapy exercise first and having success with that. And now just recently I started with the trigger points and it's really too early to say um, I'm actually just doing it on my uh, right hand side right now to see, to compare the results. But my right hand was worse than my left hand, and after just, like, one day, I, um, my right hand is now the better hand. It used to be the worst hand, now it's the better hand. So I'm really excited, <laughs> um, and will give an update on my progress, if, you know. But, uh, it's really exciting, and I just wanted to share this story and make this story hopefully a little more accessible by being in video format and shortened. Anyways, um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, feel free to subscribe, like. Um, if you've tried any of these things yourself, have a success story yourself, put it in the comments. Um, if you have a success story that you think could benefit from being put into a video, let me know. Um, I think the power of this community is really impressive and what we try to do to uh, help, help other people going through the same thing. Uh, all right, I'll see you next time.